Hi, Ladypreneurs. I am Elise Smith, your faith-based business coach, and you're tuned in to Divinely Driven Results on Transformation Talk Radio, where we implement and learn divine strategies for real results in your business. So I'm sure we're all very familiar with that voice inside of our head that tells us we're not good enough, we're never going to succeed, why try, we're never going to be as good as this other person, right? That voice hurts us in so many different ways. And so that is what I call your inner dream stealer. And we all know that that is Satan's like kind of little helper, right? Um, this, de this demon that we all kind of have. But it's even more than that. And it actually becomes extremely personal. And ladies, if we listen to that voice, it really will steal away every single dream that we have. So that is why you are going to learn today three keys to overcoming that voice and to learn who you truly are and to be able to remember that so you can gain those results that you're looking for in your business to fulfill the calling that God has given you. So I'm so excited to get started here. Um, and this all starts with an amazing story. So <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night and it really was guys. <laughs> and my husband and I were sitting in our car in front of a Salt Lake County library. And we'd been sitting there for about 10 minutes, kind of just staring at each other. <laughs> and it was awkward. And we were trying to find any excuse to not go in. And we were talking about, oh, I have a headache tonight. And you know, we have that other thing that's going on. And I was feeling really sick. Like I could smell the Del Taco in the back of the the, the car that we had just eaten on the way over and oh my gosh I think I was gonna puke and my hands were shaking and my heart was pounding in my chest like crazy and guys I could not bring myself to go in so what was I so afraid of right it was this networking event you see for a whole year a whole year I signed myself up for different networking events pretty much every single week and the same story played out over and over and over again, where I could not get myself to walk through that door. Now, I wasn't afraid, like I don't have social anxiety in that way. It was just more of the fact that I had these thoughts going on in my head all the time about these networking events. Like, no one really cares what you have to say. No one's going to listen anyway. What if you stop talking and there's that awkward silence between the two of you guys and you just like stare at each other and you both don't know what to say and then you awkwardly leave the room. <laughs> you guys ever been there before? I so have. <laughs> and and the, the fact of the matter is, is that we all have that voice in our head. And so I remember sitting in this car and just thinking like, I mean, honestly, ladies, I was so fed up with myself. I could not stand myself in that moment because my husband and I, we looked at each other and we we're like, we're not going in. And so we drove away. And it was in that moment that I knew I had to do something about it. It was in that moment that I knew God wanted me to do something about it and that I needed to. He'd been given, I'd been given this calling from him to really make a difference in people's lives, but I couldn't talk to people. That was a problem. <laughs> This was many, many years ago. Um, so fast forward to now, and I'm a completely different person than I was then. You know, there is hope. <laughs> um, now, my friend and I, we actually run a networking event. Um, we, we're hoping to make nationwide at some point. So that's super exciting. And I have been on several stages from then. From, and I'm also um, going to be speaking in London this next June. Um, so I've really been able to overcome that voice in that way. And that is exactly what I want to teach you guys. So what made the difference for me? What was, you know, going from that shy person in the car and listening to that voice inside my head over and over and over again? And not only listening to it, but believing it. That's the problem. When we listen and we believe and then we feed into the lies that are in our head, that is when our dreams really do get taken away from us. So I want you to meet your inner dream stealer. 
And the reason why I call it your inner dream stealer, like I said before, is that if we listen to this voice that Satan has kind of planted in our heads, that that will really take away every single dream that we have. And we will be miserable like unto Satan because that's what he wants. That's the whole point is he wants us to forget who we really are and to believe all of these lies and to stop acting on our dreams and to not fulfill that calling that God has given us. That is his whole purpose. And so he kind of infiltrates our mind by putting these little kind of demons or however you want to look at it in our mind and stopping us from achieving our goals. And so many times we think that it's really our voice. Well, one, I want you to understand your inner dream stealer is not you. It's not your own voice. Um, I remember thinking to myself, like, why? Why am I self-sabotaging here? Every single time that I do something that's, that I know is going to push me forward in my business, that voice comes up. And I'm like, these are my own thoughts, and I've got to stop my own thoughts. But the fact of the matter is, is it's not you. It is the adversary. There is always this battle in our minds going on at any given moment of, you know, good versus evil, God versus Satan. We know that angel on one shoulder and the devil on the other shoulder, right? And when you're constantly fighting that battle, you don't have energy to work your business the way you want to or to fulfill God's on God's calling the way he's called you to do so. And so we just need to let that go. And there's so many amazing things that can happen when we do, but it is harder than we think, right? Um, and that's why these three keys are really going to be able to help you do just that. So let's think about and get really personal with your own inner dream stealer. Um, some people call it a gremlin. Some people call it your inner critic. Um, I've uh, itty bitty committee or something like that in your head. There's so many different ways that you can look at this. Um, but I want you to kind of just think about it for a second. When you have that maybe dreaded task that you know you need to ac accomplish for your business, what are the thoughts that kind of come up in your head? And what's that picture of that inner dream stealer for you? Um, some people think of this inner dream stealer as like an old gym teacher. <laughs> they kind of get that picture in their head already. Some people think of inner dream stealer as like this big ball of goo or, you know, blackness or you know darkness or whatever that looks like for you. Um, for me, I really consider my inner dream stealer like a little demon. And it's not just on my shoulder. It's in my head and this voice is like gnashing of teeth and terror and you know just screaming at the top of my lungs that you're gonna fail and you're not worth anything and you know we we know how that feels when we're in the heat of that battle so just think about that for you what is your inner dream stealer look like and i want you to name it i know that sounds really strange some people call it Bob, some people call it Sue, like it doesn't really matter what you call it, but I want you to name it. And you can call it inner dream stealer, um, although some people think that's too long, <laughs> but I, I call it my IDS, right? <laughs> um, or you can call it, you know, a name, whatever comes to mind. Ursula, I've heard um, Ursula was this like uh, octopus in somebody's head. It was so interesting. But Think about what your inner dream stealer is to you and give it a name so that you can say, oh man, that's Bob in my head right now, you know, and then that way you can detach from it feeling like your own voice because it's not. So I want you to think about that for just a second. And it's really personal to you, meaning that your inner dream stealer knows what's important to you. It knows your values like family and God and your business and serving and it tries to attack in such personal ways and we'll talk about that here in just a second about how that attacks you and it really fights dirty your inner dream stealer oh man on that that battleground nothing is sacred for it um so you'll find especially as you start to overcome your inner dream stealer just little by little that that voice will start getting louder and louder and that's why we need to have some really strong techniques to fight it but even more than that it'll start attacking you in ways you haven't thought of it was crazy i um i felt like i really be believed in myself for the first time <clears throat> in my business and my calling with god and i really felt strongly and i was like man i'm unstoppable everything feels great and then all of a sudden 
out of nowhere, this inner dream stealer attacked me at church. And I'd never really been attacked in that way at church. And it was like he was losing power over me in business. And so we had to try and get it from somewhere else. And so watch for that as you become stronger and stronger against fighting against your inner dream stealer, then that is going to, he's going to start trying to attack other ways too, but you are going to be prepared for it because we're going to know his tactics. Um, so think about that. And then, um, you know, we'll talk about how I went from really being terrified of networking events to hosting my own and how you can overcome your inner dream stealer here in just a moment after we take a quick break. So when we come back, you're going to learn and know how to implement these three keys to silencing your inner dream stealer. And really, ladies, learn the truth about who you are so that you don't have to listen to those lies and you can gain your power back. So join us here in just a couple minutes and we'll be right back. Welcome back. You are listening to Divinely Driven Results on Transformation Talk Radio, and we are talking about your inner dream stealer. Before the break, we just discussed what your inner dream stealer looks like. We gave it a name, and we kind of helped to understand the, the, um, where your inner dream stealer is coming from, kind of those tactics, and we're about to dive into that even more. Um, we heard about my story about how I've kind of made this huge change in my life and overcome my inner dream stealer in such a huge way and that's all around three now this inner dream stealer process that I'm about to teach you is actually six steps 
and it's more of a personal process. I only do this with people um, either over the phone or via Zoom or in person because it's so personal. But what I did is I boiled it down to three steps that you can implement right now. And that is what you're about to learn here. Um, so I want you to be completely present. And I want, if you can, to grab a notebook and a pen and let's just kind of start journaling and really getting personal and honest and vulnerable about what is going on in your situation. Because as we learned from our last episode about going five layers deep with your why, that is where the good stuff is. That's where the heart of everything is, is that if we don't go deep enough, we won't be able to really get it by its roots, take out that inner dream stealer, look it in the face and then throw it away, right? Um, but we have to get those roots out first. And so um, whether you are listening to this in the car, that's totally fine. Think along um, with these questions. But then as soon as you can, get to a point where you can start journaling out your thoughts and your feelings. It is amazing, ladies, when we take pen to paper or when we start typing out our thoughts, then we really invite God to start working through us to really help us see what we're missing. So I want you to take advantage of that because it's going to be a really powerful tool for you. So ready to get into the three keys? This is exciting. My clients, oh my heavens, they love this process because it does wonders for themselves and their business. And that's exactly what it's gonna do for you today. So let's start off with key number one. Key number one is to know the enemy, right? We can't fight against an enemy that we don't understand. So we really need to understand your inner dream stealer. And remember, it's very personal. So that's why I'm gonna ask you a few questions to help you to understand it. Now we all know that our thoughts lead to our feelings, our feelings lead to our actions or inactions, and then our actions lead to our results, meaning that we are co-creating the results that we have. And I know this is gonna sound scary, but we are either co-creating with Satan or we're co-creating with God and we get to choose. So let's talk about knowing the enemy first. So when you think of a dreaded task that you don't like to do for your business, this could be doing live videos, this could be um, prospecting and getting to know other people or networking, it could be doing sales calls, it could be working on your social media, whatever it is, writing your blog, whatever that looks like. The thing that you know you want to do for your business or that you need to do for your business, but you just kind of get that pit in your stomach when you think about it, or that fear and that doubt really starts coming out, I want you to think of that task. And I want you to focus on that task for this whole process here. So think about when you are thinking about that task or doing that task, what are the thoughts that pop in your head? Are those types of thoughts such as, you know, around your effort, like, oh man, I don't have enough time to be able to make this work, or I don't have the skill or the ability, or I just can't do this, right? Or are they around your results? man, I have poured my heart and soul into this business and I've got diddly squat, right? Sometimes we look at our results and we're not where we want to be at this exact moment. And, you know, Satan or that inner dream stealer really shoves that in our face of like, well, obviously this isn't working. Yeah, we know that feeling. Um, it can be a personal attack on us, such as you're dumb or you're never going to make it or um, you're not worth it. Ooh, that one is probably the worst. Like for me, every single time I do, I do a process where I'm trying to identify my inner dream stealer's core message. It always boils down to I'm not enough. And think about that. If Satan can really make you believe, and you choose into it, of course, but if he can make you believe that you are not enough, wow, how much power does he have over you? and your results, and all the impact that you can make in this world. He knows it, and so that's why he attacks us in such personal ways. So um, there's also attacks on our, our values or on the things that we love, such as, ooh, this one's a hard one, right, is that I'm not a good mom because I spend too much time on my business, right? Or um, I am not a good wife because I'm working this business. 
you know, it really doesn't matter when it comes to what that message is. I just want you to tune into what that is for you. Um, and then there's the traditional comparison, right? Is, oh, I'm not good as good as so-and-so at social media, or I could never be as charismatic as this person in live videos. Uh, yeah, we all know those attacks, right? So now we're starting to understand those darts that our inner dream stealer just throws at us. So we're starting to understand the enemy a little bit more. So take a moment, either pause this video or audio and really start writing down some of those thoughts or at least think about some of those thoughts that you have that really hurt you. It's like, oh man, that one stung or that one goes right to my heart. And this is what I've heard of, um, and I have no idea who coined this term, but I love it, is stinking thinking, right? If we believe in this stinking thinking, no wonder it's hard for us to get ourselves to do that task. So many times we think, oh man, I just lack motivation. I just wish I could just get myself to do this task. Well, ladies, give yourself a little grace. If you have all these thoughts, and we'll talk about feelings here in just a second, but if you have all these thoughts and these feelings that are negative going around this exact event or task, well, no wonder it's so hard for you to do it. And it's our choice, of course. We, we can feed into it and we can believe whatever we want to, but give yourself a little grace. Like, no wonder it's been that difficult for you. Now, I want you to think about feelings. Now, when you have these specific thoughts of I'm not good enough and I'm just a failure and I'm never going to succeed, and there's a, a huge range of feelings and thoughts that we can have, right? It can go from subtle to really mean. I mean, we say things in our head, in the privacy of our head, that we would never say to a human being on earth, even our own worst enemy, right, ladies? We all know it. So think about what are the feelings that come from that? You know, is it despair? Is it frustration? Is it discouragement? Is it doubt? Is it fear? Man, doubt and fear are some of the worst things that can happen to us because it helps us to, or it makes us forget really who we are. So think about that. And then let's follow that chain all the way down because we're having these thoughts and these feelings. What actions or inactions are you taking? Because you might be doing those live videos, but man, your confidence is really low and you know it. It's not where you want it to be. Or maybe you aren't doing them at all because you can't get yourself to do it, right? And we gotta have some grace for ourselves, but that doesn't mean we stay there. And then we all know following that all the way to the end is the results. What kind of results or, you know, lack thereof are you seeing in your business because of this dreaded task or event that you're avoiding or maybe not doing the way that you want to? So this is the crummy part, right? <laughs> really getting honest about what goes on with our inner dream stealer. But really, ladies, let's ask ourselves, does, does, does God really want us? to feel this way? Does he want us to think these thoughts and these feelings? You know, I think about 2 Timothy um, chapter 1, verse 7, where it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Think about that. Fear always comes from the adversary. Doubt always comes from the adversary. Oh my heavens, if we truly believed in who we are as daughters of God, we could tap into the amazing godly power that we've been given just for being his daughter of God. We could do anything that he wants from us and that we want to do because we can co-create with God, the ultimate creator right? And so think about that is that we're not given the, the spirit of fear, but of power and of a sound mind. So we're about to co-create with God here. That is our second key. So think on that thought for just a moment. What kind of power do you want to bring in as a daughter of God? So key two, co-create with God. Now we're going to go back through that same process, but we're going to start with feelings because sometimes it's hard for us to look at our old thoughts and be like, okay, well, how am I supposed to think? But sometimes it's easier to say, how do I want to feel about doing this task? 
So take just a moment and really write down, you know, excited, energetic, um, you know, whatever that looks like for you. How do you want to feel about this new task? And ask yourself, what are thoughts that I can think that would support this? Or if I truly believed in myself, or if I truly had these feelings, um, or what kind of person would kind of have these feelings, what kind of thoughts would they have or would I have in that, that moment? And we can always test that biblical success principle of ask and ye shall receive. Ask God. What are the strongest thoughts that I should be thinking right now to have this feeling to be able to do thy work? And then what actions are you going to take? Maybe you're looking at your plan a little bit skewed, right? Because you're coming at it from fear and doubt because of that darn inner dream stealer inside our, our thoughts and our head um, that we are looking at it as I have to do it this way. But when you start including God and partnering with God, especially in the difficult things, then maybe he can show you a different way to do what you're trying to accomplish. And what kind of results are you going to be able to create because of that? So now that we've set that intention, let's move on to key number three, which is remember the truth. Your brain travels the path of least resistance. So when you start hearing that inner dream stealer voice, and what's so vicious about your inner dream stealer is that it shoves like all this proof in your face that you are a failure. Remember when you failed when you were three years old or, you know, like it's crazy. This stuff that your inner dream stealer shoves in your face to make you believe you really are a failure or whatever that negative message is. But remember, it's our choice. And we need to remember the truth about us, which is that we are a daughter of God with infinite possibilities and eternal power. How amazing is that? So when we choose to move that proof that your inner dream still is shoving in your face and replace it with the truth, replace it with proof of the truth. And what that looks like is that if your inner dream still is telling you you're a failure and you want to believe that you're a success, prove it. Come up with as many times as you can possibly think of that you have been a success and that you will be a success in the future. It is amazing. So remember the truth about you. Come up with a phrase that helps you to remember that truth. And I really want you to either say that in your head or come up with the proof every single time that inner dream stealer attacks. And whatever you do, watch out for it and don't believe it. Don't feed into those lies. The first step is always starting with awareness. So be aware of it, you know, know the enemy, co-create with God, meaning choose what you want, and then remember the truth about you. Those are the three keys to overcoming your inner dream stealer and unlocking your true potential. So the best way to co-create with God, as I'm sure you've already heard of because you're tuned into Divinely Driven Results on Transformation Pack Radio, <laughs> is to be able to have really strong business meetings with God, partner with him in such an amazing, incredible way. And that can be done by um, going to divinelydrivenresults.com forward slash tracker and downloading the Divine Business Tracker. So in this, you're going to get the tracker that's going to help you with your agenda, with your business meetings with God, but you're also going to have a mini course to learn that and also how to increase your conversions, get clear about your sales funnel, and really achieve those sales goals. Super powerful, ladies. You are going to want to go to divinelydrivenresults.com forward slash tracker. And then go ahead and join us next time, next Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific time, where we learn and dive into more divine techniques for real results in your business. Thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.